All right, what is up guys? So I may be way behind the curve on this and everybody already knows, but when I went to look for it, I didn't find a lot of stuff about it. So figured I'd jump right in and kind of tell you guys a little bit about um, a lure I've been using lately that's really, really been helping me a lot with the areas that I fish. So we'll talk a little bit about it today. So. <laughs> Right, guys so um i want to talk a little bit today about um it's a company out there that's called i'm sure you guys are familiar with if you've been bass fishing at all it's a company out there called mans and they make a bait that i've been using called the i want to talk to you a little bit about that guy so with the body of water that i fish a lot of um it is the potomac river and the potomac river um depending on the season it's in it can be completely choked all the way up to the top with grass it can be submerging grass it can be in the middle grass it's basically grass it's a big area full of a bunch of grass um especially the part of it that i fish so what happens is um i try to take my typical square bill um on my typical crankbait that runs three to five feet two to four feet one to three feet and um, the first turn of the reel handle is stuck in the grass. Or even if I lift my rod tip all the way up, like I'll have it all the way, I'll have it up high and first turn of the reel handle, boom, stuck in the grass. And I'm just basically just pulling back grass. Um, early in the year, like April, April, May, it wasn't as bad. I could get away with running, you know, three, four, some places I run five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I mean, if you can find them, you can run down pretty deep. Um, but basically what happens is as it gets to summertime, the grass just comes up and it's just, it's a nightmare trying to run a, um, run a crankbait through there. So um, for me, you know, I, I fish your typical stuff. I mean, I throw whatever you throw for grass fishing, whatever you want to throw, that's what you throw, it makes sense. Um, but when you're trying to get in that depth that's between one foot and zero foot, okay, um, there's a few crankbaits that can get it done. And I got another one I'm actually gonna get here soon to try out and I'm gonna tell you guys about it and it's it's gonna be great as well. And I'm, I'm really excited about this next one that's coming up. But right now and for the rest of this year, I'm really excited about what you see in front of you right here. Um, So this is the Man's Baby Minus One. They have a couple in this series, um, but maybe one minus, um, things like that. The biggest key features for it though is that it's super shallow dives 12 inches or less slow retrieve it'll run between one to two inches below the surface producing a bulge and a wake on a fast retrieve it can run down to a maximum depth of 12 inches but basically the reason why i got it is i needed something to run in that 12 inches to zero inches um area something that goes right beneath the surface kind of like a i guess like your wake bait type deal or something that can get down a tad bit but does not go past that one foot and i'll tell you what i'll sh I'll link a video below where on the Potomac we found an area of grass that the grass was coming up to about maybe about 6 to 12 inches above beneath the surface and throwing a lot of different things was my buddy was getting bit on a couple different lures I was getting bit on a couple different lures but basically I started the day 7 eight, 6 o'clock in the morning and I ran this particular Tennessee River pattern I believe this is what it's called Tennessee River pattern shad um ran it barely under the surface five fish limit in 30 minutes now mind you i lost a couple of those fish so that kind of sucked but um just to show you guys this this particular pattern right here that little orange on the bottom i i cast over i got bit once and i saw a bunch it was a quite a few fish in that little area cast over again same thing cast over again same thing like it was fish after fish after fish like i said i'll link the video below um for that so you guys can see the clips of it um, in action you can also see me losing fish on it that's unfortunate but um, as with any bait what I recommend for you guys always is change your hooks and stuff if you feel like you need to change your hooks if you're comfortable with certain kind of hooks um, or like me if you're losing fish definitely change your hooks if they bend obviously whatever the case may be but um, do what you need to do um, I'll show you guys a little bit of the colors I got so I got I picked this one up off of eBay because I was like you know what everybody can get these other standard colors I feel like this year and every year when it comes to tournament fishing, you got to find something that nobody else has and make it work for you. Um, but this crawl pattern, dude, I've been killing them on this crawl pattern. This this thing has been really, really good on the Potomac for me. Like I said, this one, I've only got a chance to throw it in two tournaments. And each one, it's gotten me three to four fish, five fish 
maybe six fish in one tournament and then the next tournament um all keepers mind you so not it's not like dinks it was enough to fill out a limit um i haven't got bid on this one just yet but i haven't been throwing it that much this one either haven't been throwing it that much i got a place i want to throw those and again this one was just me trying to be different go with a different color i definitely think color plays a role um to a certain extent but also just in general you kind of creating a reaction strike there's something buzzing over their head and the fish don't like it so they just come up and whack it and when they whack it that's when you whack them so um i wanted to kind of just do a quick video on it for you guys um typically as far as the setup i'm throwing it on seven foot medium and then my re reel i'm throwing typically is going to be somewhere between a six three six 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 one five something i'll go i'll go anywhere i need to go but slower the better for me when it comes to crankbaiting um i can reel faster if i need to reel faster i'll do vice versa too i'll throw some crankbaits on a seven one or seven three and then i just consciously remember to slow down or like it's summertime um it's it's sometimes you do want to put a crankbait on there and just burn it and with these it's like you're fishing a crankbait but you're also fishing like a top water lure so you sometimes really want to just buzz over their head so you can actually like pick up the pace on these you can come slow and have it barely come especially if you know the fish are there and you just kind of want to ease over top of them but for the most part i'm putting this thing on and i'm just kind of going going to work more cast the better more more chances the better i'll do a lot of fan casting with these with this kind of lure i'll fan cast on side side because basically for one if i can't get bit on it it'll tell me where stuff is for the fish curious they're at least curious what's buzzing over my head and then you drop something in right to their head boom you can get it so um to everyone out there that's looking for something to catch the one foot or less depth again one foot if you burn this thing you can get it down 12 inches but you, you kind of got to push it to get that 12 inches out of this thing um and that's what you're going for if you don't you can get anywhere between four to six to eight inches somewhere beautiful in there come right above the grass almost on the surface in between the little um, clumps of grass, you can come right through there and hopefully the fish is hiding in there. You can catch them, light them up, get them in the boat, get back to your tournament, tell everybody you caught them all, throw in a beetle span, okay? Or a rooster tail. So when you get back to the weigh-in site, tell everybody you caught them, throw in a rooster tail and um, smile and walk away. That's my, that's my advice to you, unless you want everybody throwing these. I'm telling y'all because I, as an angler that's growing and learning, I don't, I ain't trying to hide nothing. You understand what I'm saying? I ain't trying to hide nothing. If I can help one person catch one more fish, here's the reality. If we in a tournament together, you're going to beat me with or without my daggone tips. You understand what I'm saying? And if I'm using my tips and my tips actually work, then I should be able to do good and you should be able to do good. We should all be able to do good. Again, I just learned this technique since I've been fishing the Potomac this year. You're talking since May or June. I was like, I just kept hopping on forum after forum. I'm like, dude, there's got to be something I can fish this grass without fishing the top water. Like, I got every buzz bait, wobber plopper, uh, uh, grass burner known to man. I got every single bait you could possibly run on top of the water. I got them all, every single one of them. Trust me, when top water season comes, it's going to be phenomenal. Them all. But I needed something to go in between, something that comes on the surface. Because basically what happens is I can run it over area, burn it 12, get it down 12 inches lay off of it let it float up to like six and start again and it'll go look like it floated up dive back down coming but it's still above the grass that's the wonder of this lure still above the grass so again man's baby minus one be sure to check them out um i got more videos tips and tricks coming guys i appreciate it this one went a little bit long because i i'm actually really excited about this lure and i wanted to show you guys definitely stay tuned for the videos guys and I appreciate all the subs, all the likes, the comments, everything, guys. Again, when you see me out, say hey, say what's up. My name is Ty. You can call me Bass and Furious. I will answer. You can call me Ty. Peace.